So hello class, uh, we're going to keep talking about uh, some of the stories in The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien. I want to sort of um, jump around a little bit though. Uh, I want to look more specifically at uh, certain characters and their transformations uh, in character over the course of the stories. Uh, so we're going to talk about, uh, focus our discussion on uh, this issue of uh, trauma and how Tim O'Brien's stories sort of fit into a genre of uh, trauma writing. Uh, so he'll deal with um, experiences that uh, his uh, character and some of the other men uh, also experience uh, in relation to how they deal with uh, death and uh, the act of killing as well. So uh, we'll talk about uh, the wounded men who feature in Tim O'Brien's stories and also look at the role of uh, storytelling uh, because this is part of his uh, narrator's reflection on um, how he is able to sort of uh, heal and bring some measure of uh, closure uh, two traumatic life moments in his uh, experience through uh, telling stories. So I'm going to jump around a little bit uh, between the stories so we're not going to go just uh, straight through the text uh, because they are so sort of um, almost like fragments or pieces of memory uh, and they jump around uh, themselves between past and present. Uh, I think the the book it lends itself to sort of uh, looking at characters specifically and how those characters uh, grow and change over the course of uh, the narrative. Uh, so we're going to talk uh, about three of the main characters. Uh, Rat Kylie, who is the medic. Uh, we're also going to talk about Norman Boker. And then we'll talk about Tim O'Brien. Uh, so I'll those three characters are who uh, we're going to focus on uh, for our uh, next series of uh, lectures into the book. Um, and you might want to, you know, I don't know if you want to finish reading the book before uh, you watch these uh, lectures. I do will give spoilers uh, about what happens to the characters. So uh, best, my advice device would be to, you know, read the book, then watch, watch uh, this series of lectures. Uh, or uh, just listen to the lectures and uh, don't worry about, you know, whether or not, uh, you know, I ruin the narrative for you. You'll find out eventually. So uh, that's up to you, though. Okay, so that's what today's uh, classes are, or lectures are going to be all about. Uh, so we'll talk about trauma writing and storytelling in Tim O'Brien's The Things They Carried. So before we move on to the uh, specific uh, parts of um, Tim O'Brien's uh, The Things They Carry that I want to uh, focus on, I, I just want to sort of situate our discussion uh, in um, trauma writing. Uh, so there's a couple of critics that I can draw your attention to if you're interested in um, uh, what critics, what theorists have said about uh, the writing of trauma. Uh, you could go back uh, all the way to Sigmund Freud, who in Beyond the Pleasure Principle wrote about uh, the drive of humans to uh, uh, repeat uh, negative behaviors. Uh, there's a compulsion to repeat uh, that he noticed in uh, war veterans who uh, returned from their experience on the battlefield and they would suffer from nightmares and tremors and tics and they couldn't, it was almost as if they were reliving uh, the moment that they were traumatized over and over again in their minds. And Freud uh, sort of premised this idea that the compulsion to repeat is a way uh, of attempting to master uh, this content, this experience, that remains sort of unresolved and unintegrated into one's uh, conscious thought. So uh, you repeat it, you go over this and this moment again and again, trying to sort of 
uh, make sense of it and uh, integrate it into your conscious thought, uh, reliving it over and over again until your mind sort of wraps itself around, makes sense of what happened, and you're fully able to uh, process that event and it no longer is uh, traumatic. Uh, so uh, there's this element of repetition uh, that he noticed in uh, veterans, war veterans, uh, where they were trying to master the content, their experiences that were uh, physically and mentally distressing, and in this way their nightmares sort of spoke about um, their desire to uh, integrate these uh, horrifying events into their conscious mind. So other writers and theorists who have talked about uh, trauma literature uh, include Kali Tal and Kathy Carruth and Eric J. Lead. Um, so these writers uh, talk about how um, those uh, individuals who write about their stories, uh, their traumatic stories, uh, often do so as a way of trying to approach uh, what remains uh, an unspeakable event. So that's what makes something traumatic uh, is it's almost beyond our, our brain's capacity to fully encompass or understand what happened. So it remains kind of unresolved and uh, unprocessed and then it uh, is repeated uh, compulsively, relived over and over again as nightmares or uh, anxiety. So when we're talking about trauma you might, we're sort of contextualizing it as war but uh, you know traumatic events span multiple things. It could be an accident, it could be a sexual assault, it could be um, uh, and uh, a physical assault, uh, anything that sort of broaches uh, the integrity of one's mind and body and uh, compromises their sense of uh, self. So any event that sort of uh, is hard to process, hard to understand, and where there remains a certain amount of um, physical and psychological distress uh, become something almost unspeakable or unapproachable in our minds. And so uh, Carruth and Tal talk about uh, writers who um, are trying to approach, trying to speak the unspeakable, right? So that is what somebody like Tam O'Brien is trying to do in his narrative where he's trying to capture the realities, the horrors of the Vietnam War and make it somewhat accessible for uh, the reader. So, um, you know, you and I uh, probably don't have that experience of uh, being experiencing war firsthand, but we can sort of understand, put ourselves in that position uh, because Tim O'Brien sort of transports us uh, into uh, his experience and he approaches this idea of uh, what it was actually like. Um, so whether, you know, or not, uh, he sort of fully captures the war experience. I mean, uh, he's sort of speaking his truth, uh, but there's many different stories that could be told of the same events, right? So it is one, uh, his side of the event, um, and, you know, any of the characters in the book might have their own stories to tell, but this is uh, Tim O'Brien's version of the events uh, that occurred. And he tries to uh, capture some of the struggles of uh, the other characters as well, um, how they uh, dealt with uh, traumatic experiences in their own lives, and uh, we'll talk more about that in a moment. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention was uh, Eric J. Leeds' book as well. Uh, he sort of talks about um, how once a soldier returns from the war, uh, they can also suffer from uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, so this is where you would uh, experience symptoms uh, related to something traumatic that happened in your past, but these symptoms don't surface until uh, long after the event is over. 
Uh, so post trauma uh, suggests that it's not until, you know, it could be a month, it could be more months, six months, one year down the road, uh, you start having sort of symptoms, anxiety, nightmares, uh, it could be tics, twitches, um, you know, all manners of uh, symptoms that uh, seem to surface uh, and they're sort of they stem from something traumatic that happened uh, in one's past. Uh, so there's this idea that uh, until you fully uh, understand what happened to you, uh, how you can sort of, you, your mind can't fully uh, grasp that. And uh, if you constantly repress uh, what is traumatic, eventually it will resurface as uh, symptoms or nightmares. Uh, so that's the return of the repressed, uh, is what uh, Freud referred to it as. Uh, so for soldiers, veterans who returned to civilization after the war, uh, many of them had a very difficult time um, readjusting to civilian life, and they felt sort of stuck or caught between, um, you know, civilian life and uh, the battlefield, and they couldn't quite readjust or... Uh, return to the life uh, that they had before the war. So they're sort of in this in-between space. Uh, Eric J. Lee calls this the, a kind of liminality. Uh, so you're, you're neither here nor there. You're not fully um, the same person you were before you entered the war. Uh, so this, it, this sort of uh, process of readjusting to civilian life is often very difficult and um, the incidence of, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder in uh, war veterans is prevalent. Um, and, you know, it, we're just sort of uh, still dealing with this uh, phenomenon uh, even now where, you know, there seems to be not enough, you know, social supports for uh, soldiers and to help them readjust uh, back to civilian life, uh, especially when you think of how uh, ingrained into the sort of military mindset you have to become in order to be a soldier and uh, you learn to uh, identify yourself uh, with a kind of violent uh, masculinity as well so to readjust back into civilian life and to learn to uh, you know become just uh, an average uh, person again uh, is very a difficult process for a lot of men and women uh, so we'll see evidence of that in Tim O'Brien's uh, short stories. Uh, so if you're interested in this subject, I would you know, recommend uh, looking at uh, uh, essays by Kathy Carruth or Kathy Tal or Kelly Tal and uh, do a little bit more background research on uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, it's, it's an interesting topic and I think it relates uh, to uh, many of the texts that will uh, that we are studying this term. So, in Tim O'Brien's work, as well as uh, we saw evidence of it in uh, Timothy Finley's *The Wars*, uh, and even in uh, *A Gesture Life*, we'll see evidence of uh, post-traumatic stress in the lives of uh, soldiers.